from where we hearing 16 shots for 16 blocks and every 16 minutes it's 16 see i was 16 when my 16s dropped i spit them 16s back to back no stop now here go 16 just to let y'all know i got like six bars and at least 10 more to show y'all i spit hard with that pristine flow been at it 16 got like 16 more then let me see hmm maybe i do 16 posts to show you niggas all these just got like 16 ghosts writing in the room trying to make that 16 dope been trying to show you because i'm the 16 dope or fuck it maybe i just go and get like 16 hoes lay you niggas down now we kicking 16 doughs what you watch your sleep now you see like 16 poles you don't want to die shutting only six years old the virus got us waiting on like 16 loads back to back state to state that's like 16 toes so like every day i gotta deal with 16 trolls Roshana Guy, born January 3rd, 1978. Unfortunately, in hip hop, there's an expiration date. Only in hip hop. Those are the words of Shana as we've come to know her that perfectly captures the sense of urgency it takes to be successful in hip hop and also the mindset of the powers that be handling your situation that with one false step or shift to the back burner can change an artist's life forever. Do you feel underrated? Definitely, Shauna replies, as she explains how grateful she is even though to still be considered one of the best female MCs ever when it comes to rap. But as you know, so much more sides go with that main dish of can you rap. You have to have the charisma to entertain, love the industry you aspire or are currently in, able to make lasting connections, be smart about your contracts and intellectual property, and underratedly, you have to understand timing and knowing the plays that best suit your longevity and the ones to turn down that don't. Of course, there's a lot more ingredients to hip hop success, and for a female, that dish becomes even heavier to carry and almost impossible to digest. Day old milk left outside the refrigerator can best explain how quick a career can be for the wrong female. Was Shauna the right female? I'll explain why she was and three reasons why she wasn't that led to her stunted growth. She's 43 years old now, but when she first jumped on the scene in 2000, she was a fiery spitter with a perfect voice for rapping. She could hold her own with any artist from male to female and of any caliber, even the likes of fellow Chicago native Twister, known for his advanced speed to which he delivered his bars. Of course, that was right up Shauna's alley as she tongue twisted her way to bumping Ludacris off the open verses because of how good her verse was and how well she and Twister performed together on the track RPM. Speaking of Ludacris, an interesting question was posted in the feature on Feel Mob that asked, why didn't any of Ludacris's artists blow up outside of on songs for him they were featured on? It led me to Shauna's story and curious to know how Shauna herself felt about being another down the line of artists on Luda's DTP label that didn't reach the heights the masses knew they were capable of. So do you think Ludacris blackballed Shauna too? Or does more of the blame shift to her for not capitalizing on that opportunity? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Shauna is a rap artist from the suburbs of Chicago, Illinois, born to popular guitarist and singer 85-year-old Buddy Guy, who's still an active performer to this day, giving you a vivid picture of the earlier statements about the expiration date of the music industry contrast to hip-hop. She fell in love with rap around the age of 12 watching Rap City and shortly after she was introduced to Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock's classic hit song It Takes Two. She knew seeing that this was what she wanted to do and pursued it fully. She got a big break while stopping their tour in Atlanta going up to a radio station with a groupmate where Luda worked as a radio host at the time. 
He was looking for a female artist for his label and loved her sound. And on the spot, asked if she wanted to come to the studio and work on his song that would become a top 60 greatest hip hop song of all time, according to VH1. It was called What's Your Fantasy, released in 2000, Ludacris' first official single that gave Shauna the foot in the game she was waiting for and eventually Def Jam slash DTP came with an offer to sign the on the rise female talent. Stunt number one wasn't worth the wait. I stopped by my daughter's house. Lord, I was just trying to use the phone. Before DTP, Shauna had already seen industry success having released an album while still in the group Infamous Syndicate with fellow female rapper Latifa, aka Tifa. They released one album called Changing Lanes on Relativity Records that didn't do as well as expected in stores which led to the group being dropped and her being picked up by DTP. So Shauna already kind of had an idea of how the music industry worked. She thought Def Jam, who already had some of her favorite artists and was killing the rap game at the time, was the perfect label to sign to, along with Ludacris, a star in his own right. When she signed with Ludacris, she was six months pregnant. Of course, dealing with becoming a first-time mother and breaking into the music industry at the same time can cause things to move slow on its own, but added to that, Def Jam really didn't know what to do with Shauna coming off pregnancy and also finding the right sound for her. Ludacris was just starting to really blow up on his second album, so Def Jam really wanted to focus on his success when it came to DTP. She was from Chicago, but signed to a southern label while the South and their sound was emerging in the music industry, so created many differences between what she wanted to sound like and what the record label thought could sell. They also wanted her to promote more sexuality in her music, but Shauna, already the daughter of a successful musician, didn't see the need to compromise her integrity in that way, at least not 100% which led to constant back and forth. Her debut DTP album that was supposed to release in 2002 was pushed back two years, coming out in 2004. In that span, Ludacris had dropped two successful albums and another releasing the same year, two months after Shauna. Of course, the label put everything behind Luda's promotion and little to nothing on Shauna and the album disappointed compared to expectations, even though it sold almost 400,000 copies to date. That's low for the early 2000s. Solid project musically, but fans grew tired of waiting and some even grew to like other artists and sounds by then. She dropped a mixtape before that, which confused fans and took the anticipation away from her album. That album, Not Doing Good, placed her as an afterthought for the rest of her time on Def Jam. Stunt number two, Shauna vs. Ludacris. My little grandbaby came to the door and said, Granddaddy, you know, ain't nobody at home. Did Ludacris blackball Shauna? Yes and no. According to Shauna herself, the issues really started naturally with DTP, who had all been together for 10 years when the split happened. Before then, Shauna dropped a second album on DTP that charted better than her first, but still not enough to make her a focal point. Luda was doing his own thing, movies, signing younger artists, and also years later when L.A. Reid joined Def Jam, he made a statement that Shauna was not on his radar of artists he's looking forward to pushing, to which she got wind of. All of this created the tornado that led to what was to come. Add to that, she was pregnant again with a third child while label disputes were going on and refused to give up time with her newborn to uphold obligations of a label that didn't care about her as an artist. She'd stop coming around as often and eventually things unfolded and DTP along with Shauna agreed to part ways in 2010. 
There was one situation she did speak on directly regarding Ludacris blocking her performance at the BET Awards in Atlanta. While on her way to the awards, she got a call that DTP heads who were hosting the awards didn't want her on stage and didn't want her to potentially be in the cipher, which would have been a good look for her. If we're to believe that story, imagine the other opportunities she must have been blocked from receiving, all because misunderstanding between her and DTP. Ludacris's partner Shaka also runs DTP, so it doesn't necessarily mean Ludacris did the blackballing. Stunt number three, time expires. Damn right, I got the blues. The final growth stunt that caused Shauna not to reach her full potential as a musician is time running out. Since 2006, Shauna hadn't released another studio album and her fans either grew or found other artists. She'd take a long hiatus from the music industry and that all but killed the buzz she had and everyone outside of her core following frankly didn't care anymore. If you hear Shauna spit a freestyle right now, or one of her new songs, she obviously still has it. But at 43 years old, disputes with Def Jam and Ludacris, where does her music go from here? No matter how good she raps, unless an artist like a Kanye West, who produced her first album before DTP, reaches back and works with her, sadly, her time may have expired as a successful hip-hop artist. All in all, it's disappointing the fans don't get to hear more mainstream Shauna because as far as rapping, she's right up there with the Remy's, the Nicki Minaj's, and the Cardi B's, if not better. But too much time may have passed for this new social media world to care or give the mother of three a chance. I do think there's a lane for her, and it's not doing the basic raps about the hood, cars, money, and bringing smoke. She should focus on substance in her content and making great music away from the typical bassy sound popular today. She just may find her way back in the people's hearts. At least her music would be more timeless if nothing else. Salute to Shauna, much respect, but for these reasons, her growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.